Hi, Paul from Paul's Passing Thoughts here. We're continuing in our um, little video clips here in regard to comments that have been made on Paul's Passing Thoughts. And we're looking at a comment that a Calvinist uh, made in regard to this article. And the part of it this time in this clip of his comment that I would like to emphasize is um, where he says, Both um, were accomplished for God's elect by the same work of Christ. Singular. Work of Christ. Uh, and by both, he's talking about justification and sanctification. Uh, both were accomplished by the work of Christ. Now, here's the problem that we have in Reformed uh, theology, the gospel, doctrine in general, is because of its Gnostic uh, leaning uh, and its world, uh, its Gnostic world view, um, the Holy Spirit and God the Father are secondary players in salvation. Christ is given preeminence over them. Uh, it's almost as if, you know, God the Father and the Holy Spirit are um, mere shadows of Christ or just some kind of representation of Christ. It could well be argued that that is the Reformed uh, tradition. And uh, let's look at that. First of all, what they use to the hermeneutic that they use to uh, establish this is um, what we call the emphasis hermeneutic that I have talked a lot about. And um, I have a quotation here from somebody uh, in Reformed circles that states, since historically most Egypt, e uh, exegetical debate or error has been a matter of emphasis, which of these three aspects of redemption should the church emphasize? Well, of course, uh, what he's um, campaigning for is that it's the work of Christ that should be emphasized. All right? Um, if we emphasize the others, um, as some Reformed folks state, you know, that's um, making the results of salvation or the fruit the root. You're emphasizing a good thing, but not the best thing, which was stated quite a bit in this article by uh, Reformation theologian Jeffrey Paxton, uh, who is a well-known Anglican clergyman and uh, Australian educator. Um, if you emphasize in his article the false gospel of the new birth, all right, he states that um, talking about the new birth or regeneration is talking about a good thing but not the best thing and it's making uh, the fruit of justification, the root of justification. We talked a little bit about that in a short uh, video clip from last uh, last week. All right, so on this emphasis hermeneutic, um, it's a Gnostic concept, and you can see here how it works. Um, get my little pen here for a pointer. Um, and you see here this book that we're going to talk about, Uneclipsing the Sun by uh, Rick Holland, um, a confidant of John MacArthur Jr. And, and of course, as you can see here, John MacArthur uh, wrote the foreword. Um, this is the, the primary construct of his book and what it's based on, the Gnostic Emphasis Hermeneutic. And basically... Uh, we don't want to eclipse the sun. So his book is all about uneclipsing the sun. Well, here is the sun, Jesus Christ, wink, wink. Um, all of the, um, you know, life-giving power is of the sun. 
okay? Um, see, this part of the object or the building here is you have the, the full force of truth and reality revealed by the sun because there's no obstacles between here and here. But if you put anything, uh, if you emphasize anything more than, let's just call it for what it is, Plato's true forms, that is an obstacle that creates shadows over here. Okay, this is Plato's shadow reality. Hey, the shadows are true, all right, but they're only a shadow of the of the true reality or truth. Okay, um, this Gnostic preoccupation comes out in Luther, Calvin's, and especially Augustine's gospel. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this. Um, as I said, um, you know, this hermeneutic uh, and the uh, resulting uh, rejection of the uh, new birth was written about in this eight-page article in Present Truth magazine, which was the theological journal of the Australian Forum uh, and part of that forum was uh, Graham uh, Gold, Goldsworthy, who is um, seen in Reformed circles and today in the New Calvinist movement as the continuing torchbearer of the hermeneutics of Gerhardus Voss, uh, who was the one that articulated this particular hermeneutic in the form of historical redemptive hermeneutics okay uh, Graham Goldsworthy has been invited by Al Mohler to speak at Southern Seminary he wrote the the uh, uh, the Golds uh, Goldsworthy trilogy which is the hermeneutical standard for New Calvinism in our day alright now um, Jeffrey Paxton here alright uh, was also part of the Australian Forum, as was Graham Goldsworthy. Now, in my presentation at the 2013 uh, Tank Conference, um, and here is the presentation of that. It's a my presentation is a published uh, presentation called Pictures of Calvinism. Okay. And in Pictures of Calvinism, which you can buy on, on Amazon, on page uh, 35, um, I note there, on that page, in that same article, uh, the new birth uh, robs Christ of his glory by putting the Spirit's work in the believer above and therefore against what Christ has done for the believer in his doing and dying, all right? And then Michael Horton, who basically, by the way, uh, Michael Horton's theology was primarily formed by Goldsworthy and Paxton um, via the Australian Forum that, you know, launched the latest, the fifth resurgence and reformed history which we know now is the new calvinist movement okay uh i cite michael horton as saying but to whom are we introducing people christ or to ourselves is the good news no longer christ doing and dying but our own spirit filled life and that whole thing with christ doing and dying that was a pop popular um truism uh, the doing and dying of Christ of the Australian Forum. Well, the point I want to make here is if you go to page uh, 36, uh, Goldsworthy says um, in an article, and the new birth oriented Jesus in my heart gospel of evangelicals has destroyed the Old Testament just as effectively as um, 19th century liberalism. Now, I make a note here. In that article that he wrote um, against, you know, the whole concept of Jesus in my heart, and, and mark it well, 
Um, the whole Jesus in my heart controversy that is now raging in Southern Baptist circles goes right back to this, my friends. Uh, with that, let's look at how this concept uh, fleshes itself out in the writings of today's Calvinist, okay? Like I said, this book by Rick Holland was based on all of that. And in this book, we find some shocking statements. In the foreword, John MacArthur Jr. states, um, Rick Holland understands that truth. This book is an insightful, convicting reminder that no one and nothing other than Christ deserves to be the central theme um, of the tidings we as Christians proclaim, not only to one another and to the world, but also in the private meditations of our heart. Okay? Um, then he goes on to say in the foreword, the pastor who makes anything, okay, or anyone other than Christ, the focus of his message, is actually hindering the sanctification of the flock. So if we emphasize God um, in sanctification, or the Holy Spirit, as much as Christ, we're hindering um, sanctification. All right. And for that matter, you could say, uh, if you read closely what our friend said, in his comment, um, you could also say you're hindering justification as well. And you say, well, Paul, how could how could you you say it's hindering um, hindering uh, justification? Well, because you know if you if you reread his quote carefully here. Um, all right, he's saying justification um, and sanctification both accomplished our salvation. They're they're both, uh, you know, they're distinct, but they're they're you can't separate them. So, uh, in other words, if you're hindering sanctification, you're also hindering justification. So, by emphasizing the Holy Spirit, or God the Father, as much as you do as Christ in sanctification, you're hindering your salvation. Well, how can they believe that? Well, because they believe justification is progressive. It's still progressing, taking place. So, basically, if you emphasize God and the Holy Spirit as much as you do... Uh, Jesus Christ in your sanctification, you're putting your salvation in jeopardy. What kind of things come out of this? How does it flesh itself out? Well, in Holland's book, he talks about being saved from God. All right? This is the whole thing that you hear a lot about in Reformed uh, theology of, um, of Jesus Christ saving us from God saving us from the wrath of God. Well, didn't he? He did, but it's framed in a way to where you're, where you're not, if, you're, if it's not balanced and that's all you're talking about, you do get the idea that, that God the Father is this separate wrathful God who only who has no love but is only a wrathful God and we are saved uh, 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 you know, we are saved from him by Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus to the rescue sort of thing. So basically what this does is makes, um, uh, what this does is, you know, virtually makes God the Father and the Holy Spirit shadows of Christ, okay? All right, moving along here, um, We have here a book by Jeffrey Paxton. Uh, this is from his book, The Shaking of Adventism. And uh, he states the following on page 41. And, um, you know, you don't hear a lot of Calvinists say this outrightly, but, you know, this is really the heart of the matter. 
And on page 41, he states the following. Um, the reformers also stressed Christ alone over against all, be they Roman Catholics or Protestants. Who would point to the inside of the believer as the place where justifying righteousness dwells? Christ alone means literally Christ alone and not the believer. Okay? And he goes on to say, and for that matter, it does not even mean any other member of the Trinity. All right, that's a shocking statement, but it is really the essence of Reformed theology. Um, this is a pretty decent book here, Biblical Law by H.B. Clark. And he talks uh, in the introduction um, in pages, um, uh, right around pages 5 through 8 or 9 in the inter introduction, he tar talks about first century and second century Gnosticism to where this, this same concept was popular. Um, let me see, let me read here. Uh, okay, this, this approach has been tried um, many times uh, before the second century heretic Marcion made a distinction between the God of the Old Covenant and the God of the New Covenant. Marcion distinguished between Creator and Redeemer gods. The Creator God is imperfect, full of wrath, a wild and warlike sovereign. And in fact, if God the Father is only a shadow of Christ, um, you know, um, that would make him lesser, right? Um, this is the creator of the world. Of grace he knows nothing. He rules with rigor and justice only. All the misery of human existence results from the character of this God. Uh, the Old Testament was the revelation of the Creator and God of the Jews. This is why Marcion rejected the Old Testament. So basically it's this whole construct that Jesus is the God of grace and God the Father is the, um, uh, the expression of law um, and justice and wrath and judgment and then you know you bring the holy spirit in there the other two members of the trinities are now just certain expressions of christ but um christ is really the one who you know only his works count in salvation